The following are not my jokes. The following are jokes I read off the internet. Cheers. <clears throat> a girl from Texas and a girl from New York were seated side by side on an airplane. The girl from Texas, being friendly and all, said, So, where y'all from? The New York girl said, From a place where they know better than to use a preposition at the end of a sentence. The girl from Texas sat quietly for a few moments and replied, So, where y'all from, bitch? It was the first day of grade three in a new town for Johnny. As a test, his teacher went around the room and asked each of the students to count to 50. Some did very well, counting as high as 30 or 40 with just a few mistakes. Others couldn't get past 20. Johnny, however, did exactly well. He counted past 50 right up to 100 without any mistakes. He was so excited that he ran home and told his dad how well he'd done. His dad nodded and told him, That's because you're from Alabama, son. The next day in language class, the teacher asked the students to recite the alphabet. It's grade three, so most can make it halfway through without much trouble. Some made it to S or T, but Johnny rattled off the alphabet perfectly right to the end. That evening, Johnny once again bragged to his dad about how his prowess in his new school. His dad knowingly explained to him, That's because you're from Alabama, son. The next day, after physical education, the boys were taking showers. Johnny noted that, compared to the other boys in his grade, he seemed overly well endowed. This confused him. That night, he told his dad, Dad, they all have little tiny ones, but mine is ten times bigger than theirs. Is that because I'm from Alabama? He asked. No, son. Explained his dad, that's because you're 18. Oh, damn, the damn video didn't work in time. Thank you. And I better luck doing the crickets. In the hospital, the relatives gathered in the waiting room where their family member lay gravely ill. Finally, the doctor came in looking tired and somber. I'm afraid I am the bearer of bad news, he said as he surveyed the worried faces. The only hope left for your loved one at this time is a brain transplant. It's an experimental procedure, semi-risky, and you will have to pay for the brain yourselves. The family members sat silent as they absorbed the news. After a length of time, someone asked, well, how much does a brain cost? The doctor quickly responded, $5,000 for a male brain and $200 for a female brain. The moment turned awkward. Men in the room tried not to smile, avoiding eye contact with the women, but some actually smirked. A man, unable to control his curiosity, blurted out the question everyone wanted to ask. Why is the male brain so much more? The doctor smiled at the childish innocence and then to the entire group said, It's just standard pricing procedure. We have to mark down the price of the female brains because they've actually been used. I thought it was funny. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> A farmer had advertised his farm and was showing it to a prospective buyer. As they walked along a fence line, the buyer saw beehives and stopped. Those hives are pretty close to the road, he said. The farmer explained that the bees just make honey and have never stung anyone. The buyer felt unsure about the sale until he proposed that he be tied to a nearby tree naked overnight. If he was stung once, he would get the farm for free, but if he wasn't stung, then he would pay the farmer double the price. The farmer agreed and tied the now naked man next to the tree. Blech. The next morning, the farmer saw the man leaning over and very pale. Oh no, the farmer thought. He got stung and now I have to give him the farm. As he reached the man, he gently shook him and asked where he got stung and if he needed a doctor. No, 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 I'm okay, grasped the naked man. I'll pay you double for the farm, but that do but doesn't that damn calf have a mother? A young man wanted to purchase a gift for his new sweetheart's birthday, and as they had not been dating very long, after careful consideration, he decided a pair of gloves would strike the right note. Romantic, but not too personal. Accompanied by his sweetheart's younger sister, he went to Nordstrom and bought a pair of white gloves. The sister purchased a pair of panties for herself. <clears throat> During the wrapping, the clerk mixed up the items and the sister got the gloves and the sweetheart got the panties. Without checking the contents, the young man sealed the package and sent it to his sweetheart with the following note. I chose these because I noticed that you are not in the habit of wearing any when we go out in the evening. If it had not been for your sister, I would have chosen the long ones with the buttons, but she wears short ones that are easier to remove. These are a delicate shade, but the lady I bought them from showed me the pair she had been wearing for the past three weeks, and they were hardly soiled. I had her try yours on for me, and she looked really smart. I wish I was there to put them on for you for the first time, as no doubt other hands will come in contact with them before I have a chance to see you again. When you take them off, remember to blow in them before putting them away, as they will naturally be a little damp from wearing. Just think how many times I will kiss them during the coming year. I hope you will wear them for me on Friday night. All my love. P.S. The latest style is to wear them folded down with a little fur showing. A 
couple, aged 65 and 67, went to the doctor's office. The doctor asked them, what can I do for you? The man said, will you watch us have sexual intercourse? The doctor looked confused but agreed. When the couple had finished, the doctor said, there is nothing wrong with the way you have intercourse. And he charged them $20. This happened several weeks in a row. The couple would make an appointment, have intercourse, pay the doctor, and leave. Finally, the doctor asked, please explain, just exactly what are you trying to figure out? The old man responded, we're not trying to find out anything. She's married and we can't go to her house. I'm married and we can't go to my house. The Sheraton Hotel charges $52. The Hilton Hotel charges $37. We do it here for 20 bucks, and I get $18 back from the insurance company for a visit to the doctor's office. Oh, my dad's going to kill me for this one. <clears throat> anyway. A young man graduated from the University of Arkansas with a degree in journalism. His first assignment for the newspaper who hired him was to write a human interest story. Being from Arkansas, he went back to the country to do his research. He went to an old farmer's house way back in the hills, introduced himself to the farmer, and proceeded to explain to him why he was there. The young man asked, Has anything ever happened around here that made you happy? The farmer thought for a minute and said, Yep, one time one of my neighbor's sheep got lost. We formed a posse and found it. We all screwed it and took it back home. I can't print that, the young man explained. Can you think of anything else that happened that made you or a lot of other people happy? After another moment, the farmer said, Yeah, one time my neighbor's daughter, a good-looking girl, got lost. We formed a big posse at that time, found her. After we all screwed her, we took her back home. Again, the young man said, I can't print that either. Has anything ever happened around here that made you sad? The old farmer dropped his head as if he were ashamed, and after a few seconds, looked up timidly at the young man and said, I got lost once. I seriously am going to quit doing this. Y'all don't quit cricketing at me. <clears throat> there was a beautiful young blonde who was going to a soda machine, and she arrived there just before a businessman coming to quench his thirst. She opened her purse and put in 50 cents, studied the machine a little, pushed a Diet Coke selections, and out came a Diet Coke, which she placed on a counter by the machine. Then she reached in her purse again, pulled out a dollar, and inserted it in the machine. Studying the machine carefully, she pushed the button for a Coke Classic, and out came a Coke Classic and 50 cents change. She immediately took the 50 cents and put it in the machine, studied it for a moment, and pushed the Mountain Dew button. Out came a Mountain Dew. As she was reaching into her purse again, the businessman who had been waiting patiently for several minutes now spoke up. Excuse me, miss, but are you done, le done yet? She looked at them and indignantly replied, Well, duh, I'm still winning!